Celebrating that day anyway. Well, that's another program. However, we are at the seventh, seventh day of July, and uh, this is the Ron March show broadcasting out of Detroit. I'm getting a lot of emails asking for information, and uh, I am uh, sorry to say that most of the information is beyond my expertise in that I haven't went as far as most of you listeners. Uh, when it comes to uh, your 98, your trust, your I take a step at a time. I don't leap out, listen to different programs, get a piece here, a piece there, and all that. I don't operate that way. In order for me to, to, to stay true, I need to experience each step personally so that I can know when I tell you what is and what is not. Uh, they're asking me about the, my, my next move this week is going to be the 90, uh, 98 EIN. Most of you guys out there have either went back to, um, uh, not back to, but listened to Jonah or Hindsight or, or Use of L, some of the heavyweights out there that have done all of this. And uh, I have not done, uh, I'm not perfected yet. I'm free, but I'm not perfected. I'm still hiding in the bushes as a runaway slave with my paperwork, but I want to get more arsenal so I can be more educated on what I can do and which way I should go. So I'm going a step at a time. I'm not in any rush to complete this thing overnight in that I've been a slave for 70 years and uh, I'm not going to rush and try to make this thing a, a FedEx, FedEx or, or uh, one of the other zippity doodahs and fool around and make a mistake. My steps, I will relate them to you. My steps are number one to the birth certificate. You want to be sure that you have authenticated your birth certificate. That means from the state, and then it's confirmed by the State Department of the federal government, which will be uh, John Kerry's, John Kerry's office in Virginia. It's in Virginia. I have that. I keep saying, I'm going to talk to my webmaster. I want to put that address on my website so you'll know where to send your uh, paperwork once you get it back from the state. That's number one. That's the first step. Phase one. I call that phase one. Now, phase two. You must, once you get your paperwork back, you're going into phase two. I project that you do your affidavit of ownership and I'm going to go back to my site because surprisingly I have people calling me wanting to know uh, you know it just, it's just it's almost ridiculous when they ask me I'm going back to ronmarch.com and they're asking me where can they get it they read one to me over the air I mean they uh, they they uh, telephone me and talk to me about it, or they read one, and I'm wondering. I said, "Well, where in the hell did you get that?" Uh, uh, it was on your no. It was that was not on my site. That was not on my site. Uh, I'm looking at it. it Looks like my site is down. If the webmaster is maybe asking me. Uh, Looks like they're asking you, uh, what do you want to look for? I got to see what they are. So I'm going to say, who? I'm going to look for who owns you. And if this doesn't work, it looks like it, it might work. But if it doesn't work, 
I'm going to, on my, there we go, it works. I'll be damned. I have to give my webmaster. Yeah, but it doesn't give me the whole article. Yep, read more. Okay. I go to my, my home page. You type in what you're looking for. There you go. I'm going to have to talk to my uh, webmaster. He's on the ball. Okay. So uh, they're talking about the birth certificate. So we're going to start going down. The next article is Temple 9, District 7 of the Morris Science Temple. We don't want that article. Still going down. And now we're at the Wachita Moors. All of this is positive reading. Because in addition to getting your paperwork straight, you got to have your mind straight. And this is where most of us fall short. Now we got the article, Redemption of Your Straw Man Account, filing a UCC-1 with the Treasury Department. Is there, There's a treasury bond in my name. That's a beautiful article to read. We're still going down. Yes, we're still going down, and it's a big article. We're almost at the bottom of the page. Now, we found it. The name of the article is Who Owns You? First off, let's give thanks to Jonah Bay for sharing this process. I'm going directly to first, I'm going directly to the David of ownership. You have to remember that your ownership, you cannot talk to corporations. You must Put it in writing. Someone has, corporations cannot talk. Now, those persons that are on payroll in corporations, they are obligated to answer, or they have a certain section or department that will answer most of your request. You have to get it in writing that someone inside the corporation has recognized your uh, document. Either accept it, reject it, or the most important one is don't do anything at all. If you don't, if you don't hear anything within 30 days, you must do what is called an administrative remedy. Administrative remedies are the best remedies to have. I have found that in my uh, process of trying to be free, because no slave master is going to give you freedom because he can't give you freedom. You put yourself in slavery due to your parents, your mother certificate and your corrupt mind of not knowing who you are. Now, we, can argue, we can argue about that any way you want but I'm giving it to you straight. Your corrupt ignorant, comatose mind put you in slavery. There's no chains on you. There's no whips. If you follow their law, there's no penalties of any kind that you have to stay in slavery. But you choose to stay in slavery because you're ignorant of what is freedom. Let's leave it right there for now. If there's any questions on that, somebody will ask it, and I will go further into it. But the Affidavit of Ownership, this is a very, very important document. You have to swear that what you've done with your birth certificate, you have to swear that you have done everything legal, and that person in the birth certificate or on the birth certificate is you. That's why you must get the long form because the long form is the one that's in upper and lower caps. 
over this holiday period, I talked to several people, especially since one of my trips to uh, Mississippi. I went to Mississippi, and I've asked them about the fact of why is all of your information that comes in the mail or comes from the corporation, no matter what it is, is in all capital letters. You will be surprised. If I had to give a percentage of people that knew why it was in all caps, it would be around 5 to 7%. The rest of them all say something of the foolish, like they might have made a mistake, or I never even thought about it. When I saw my name, I just said it was mine. Well, that's the first step right there. You got to wake up. And I was listening to Jonah Bay on his some of his uh, calling shows. That brother gets so frustrated on the ignorance, and the ignorance is not an ugly word. It's not something that you know somebody's uh, picking on you or talking about you. Ignorance. People that don't know. Now you get stupid when you trying to argue what you don't know. And I would think Jonah was the last one that you want to argue with because Jonah goes by the book. He has he knows the law. And when he comes out with something, he has researched it, researched it, and researched it, researched. That's why I like his brother. I don't have to fall in love with him, but you got to respect him because he knows what he's doing. And I am very fortunate to even meet a brother like that, especially in my travels. I never met a cat that can do what Jonah does. However, this affidavit of ownership, is that goes into phase two. Affidavit of ownership, okay? Now, let's read it together. The way I set mine up, I started at the top. In fact, P.O. Box, Detroit, Michigan. April, I did it April the 20th. Certified mail, article number, bam, put it right in there. So there can be no excuse when I mail it out that they did or did not get it. Now, every time I send it, I can do one of two things. No, I'm gonna do I'm gonna do it right. I'm gonna send it with a new certified mail article number. That that represents the fact that the letter was sent and it was backed up by the United States Postal Service. That's all that means. So you can't say you didn't get it. Someone signed for the green card. And you know the rules of sovereignty, one of the major rules, a notice to principal is a notice to, what is that? Oh, notice, to, I got to think about it for a minute. I have you, it might be on here. It should be on here. But of course it is not. Notice to principal is a notice to uh, how does that how does that go while you recall it's calling my I'll come back to that because we know we need to know that information however what it notifies you of agent there you go here we go a notice to principal is a notice to agent the principal would be the corporation the agent is whoever signs for the corporation. You don't care. You don't care who signs. Mailman, janitor, midnight crew, paper boy that happened to walk in, it doesn't matter. You're protecting yourself. A notice to principal is a notice to agent. A notice to agent is a notice to principal. You can't get around it. Once you get your green card back, you know they have received it. All right. Now, we get into the body of it. I, Ron, Ronald Lee Marsh, the undersigned of lawful age and being first duty sworn on oath to 
propose and state that I am familiar with the facts contained herein. Said birth, said birth certificate and having attained the age of the majority at a date 18 years after the date of birth, shown by the certificate, the party named in said birth certificate is the same party as one of the owners named in said birth certificate of title. It's just a simple letter or notice that you are the owner, then you must get it notarized. And once you notarize it, you sign it in the presence of the notary, which means that you swear that what you said is the truth. A man's word is his bond. You can't get around that. Then you sign it above your signature you will place uh, in Michigan, UCC, the number for Michigan is 440. So we we use 440.1207 and 440.1308, which means I reserve all my rights without prejudice. And you sign it with your cursor name to let them know that the upper and lower caps in that birth certificate is you. And you get it notarized. Now, this document is one of, it's, it's very important because you're going to send this out more than you send out the birth certificate. You're going to always keep that birth certificate as backup if someone wants to challenge you and attempt to, I don't know, try to discourage, dishonor you in any way. You always have your birth certificate. And if you look at the top of the birth certificate, when it came back from Washington, D.C., there is a birth certificate number at the top. You can use that number. Maybe I'll put that, you could almost put that number in your affidavit of ownership. But the bottom line is you must show through an affidavit that the birth certificate process you have done and you are now the owner of the birth certificate affidavit of ownership now since you do own your your all caps your straw man you are still responsible for any activity the straw man does such as buying an automobile own because you can't live and operate in United States of America unless you have a, a corporation. And the straw man, which you own, is the corporation because it's all caps. So you can't buy a loaf of bread on credit, groceries on credit, unless you have a straw man. So don't think you're going to stop paying bills because you have certified or authenticated your birth certificate. However, the good news is you can use instruments, not dollars. It is thir I keep saying 13. I'm going to stick with that number. There are over 13, at least 13 plus instruments that can be used to write off your bills or to purchase anything you want. So you're writing them off. That's number one. Number two, you must have credit, good credit. Because you you have to, before you can use the instrument, you must have debt. And you don't have debt if you don't purchase something on, on credit. Now, 90% of us don't have, uh, uh, have bad credit. I know I do, terrible credit. But once you finish the process and create your new D, uh, EIN, which is your 98 EIN number, your credit rating is 800. What is the highest? It's 800. I know you're laughing. That ain't going to help you because no established business will sell you anything with an 800 credit rating and no history of payments. So you have to start building your new credit. You must set up a history. First thing they're going to check is for history. And the process of 
the birth certificate is to create a trust, quote unquote, a corporation, uh, quote unquote, a tool that you can operate in the system under your DBA, which would be your new name. You don't want that name to be close to your straw man. So, your, your next step or phase two, you must get your ownership out, number one. Number two, you must do a DBA. And that and then number three, you're going to start working on your do not detain list, which is called your injunction. Now, you can have a thousand injunctions, or you can have one if you are smart enough to fix it so it will cover all of your activities. You want to be protected, and you want to put everyone on notice. Word of mouth is not going to do it. If you're going to travel, for example, they can only give you a ticket in your straw man's capacity. You are not the straw man. So now you're going to say, I'm going to pay it with an instrument. And let's stay within the rules because they say a ticket is a contract. And your uh, Fair Debt Collection, nope, not Fair Debt Collection, mm -hmm. Truth and Lending Act, Federal Truth and Lending Act states that you can cancel any contract within a 72-hour period. All of this is just basic stuff. Until you get your basics down where you can work with it every day and get your bills and all of your debt eliminated, then you can go into a higher phase. That's when you should be listening carefully to brothers like Jonah and Yusuf L. They can take you to a higher plane. But we're so, I, I know I'm so low, I'm just trying to work out the basics. I've been doing a lot of this in the past, and it has worked probably 70% of the time it has worked. Tickets for sure, three days, 72 hours. Sometimes they will challenge you, make you come in. And uh, when you do go in, they're going to, like when they called me in, they had a referee. Of course, being, <laughs> let me just call myself a smart aleck. I'm going to try and show them what I know. That's the biggest mistake you can make when you're dealing with a corporation like United States of America. You don't want to show out. You want to say as least as possible, stay within the rules and regulations of the state, and any federal violation you can muster up, use that. Stay with it. Don't let them get you in another argument. And never, ever, ever agree on anything when it comes to the courts. Now, a lot of you are going to <laughs> say, I'd rather pay the ticket than go down there, which is all right if that's what you want to do. A guy called me the other day. He filed bankruptcy on all of his bills. One of the bills was this uh, uh, automobile. The wife kept making payments on the automobile. Once he got cleared in the bankruptcy, everything was normal. All of a sudden, these third-party debt collectors popped up and said they want them to make payments or continually make payments. He's asking me, what can he do? You know, how can I answer such a stupid question dealing with an individual that should know better. If you're going to file bankruptcy, you do not pay any of the bills that are approved by the bankruptcy. And everything you list will be approved with between the referee and the federal judge. I mean, think about that. But you're going to continuously pay. 
Why file bankruptcy? You could have kept that one out of your bankruptcy and went on and filed on the other stuff. But now, he tells me, that her payments or her her uh, job is cutting back, so he can't afford to make the payments now. So now he wants me to get him out of hot water. How can I get him out of hot water? These are the things that are frustrating when you're dealing with our people. If you can't do the time, don't do the crime. If you don't want to follow the rules of debt redemption, don't play the game. Pay your bills. I've never said not pay your bills. And I'm saying it again. I'll say it right now. You must pay your bills. But there are ways to pay the bills. But we know the first step. Get your birth certificate squared away. Then you're going to go into your affidavit. Then you're going to go into your, what they call your DBA. You're going to create a spiritual name. People call up. They email me, Ron, I want to get nationalized and I want to get my name changed. All right? I don't have a problem with that. But now you're going to argue with me and tell me what you're supposed to do. And I say, well, why are you calling me? If you know what to do, why are you calling me? Well, they said that this. They said that. And then I say Stay with them and they. Stop calling me. There is no process that the government can do that will nationalize you or give you a uh, change your name. If you go through the government, United States of America, and change your name, first of all, they're going to charge you a fee. Secondly, that name becomes your new Straw man. It's going to be in all caps. Hello? It's going to be in all caps. So what have you done? You got out of one system and jumped right back into another system. Your name. Your mother gave you that name. If you don't like it, change it. But you can't change it unless you own the straw, the birth certificate. Now, once you own the birth certificate, you are out of the jurisdiction of the United States of America. Do y'all understand what jurisdiction is? That's a tricky, tricky, tricky word that they have been masters of. And let me see if I can, definition of jurisdiction. Let's see if I can give you a good definition. Jurisdiction, okay, Uh, jurisdiction, a noun, the right power and authority to administrate, to administer justice by hearing and determining controversies. That's a court. Once you go into the court that belongs to the United States of America, they have a jurisdiction. When you go in there, they have the right, the power, and authority to administer justice. Number two, power, authority, control. He has jurisdiction over all American soldiers in the area. That's that's true. Because if you're a military soldier, you have signed a contract to be a soldier in the United States Army. So wherever you go, you're under the jurisdiction of the United States Army. You sign a contract. Number three, the extent or range of judicial, law enforcement, or other authority. The case comes under the jurisdiction of the local police. Here we go again. DPOA is a corporation. 
under the jurisdiction of the city of Detroit, under the jurisdiction of all of these are contracts. They give the police department authority to administer power, control, and rights in their jurisdiction. Number four, the territory over which authority is exercised. All islands to the northwest are of his jurisdiction. That's simple. When you go into combat, you take certain areas, you put that area under your jurisdiction. Normally, once the people are defeated, they sign on their truce and treaties, and they give up their sovereignty to the victors. So now you come under the jurisdiction of the victor. Jurisdiction, definition of jurisdiction by free dictionary. The law, law, the right of a court to hear a, a particular case based on the scope of its authority over the type of case and the parties to the case. A, of the authority or control. So you're really talking about these corporations have jurisdiction. All corporations have jurisdiction. In order for them to function, they must have jurisdiction. Now, there's, there's a lot of ways they can do it. First of all, in their bylaws, they set up the jurisdiction of that corporation. In other words, what that corporation does or does not do, have the right to, or the right not to do certain things. That's in your, in your, uh, of your instruments, of your trust, or your corporation. When you go to General Motors, they have a, a, a section in their jurisdiction where they can protect their property. So they will have security guards. Most of them will be General Motors of uh, uh, badges and flags on, or whatever the case may be. When you go into hospitals or you go on college campus, those security persons are nothing more than rent a pigs, but they're under the jurisdiction of the university, of the hospital. Now, listen carefully. Since all jurisdiction, I mean, all corporations has a CEO. Somebody's in charge. All corporation CEOs must swear to hold up the United States original constitution and the constitution or bylaws of the corporation they're in. They always take two oaths of office. Some take more than that, but I know the two major oaths are to uphold the United States Constitution. None of this trash, none of this garbage. The original 1787 Constitution or contract, all CEOs are sworn to uphold it. They, all Constitution, state, there's, there's another oath. They got a state oath. There you go. That's the third one. They have a Constitution oath, a state oath, and then they have a corporation oath. But all of them have to be sworn by the Constitution of the United States, of the flag of the United States. And that flag that you don't know about, writ the, the old, old glory, is a war flag. So they are part of murdering, killing everybody on earth because they swear to uphold it. That's a war flag. But that's another, another show altogether. But what I'm getting at is you need to protect yourself by following the process that has been set forth by these young brothers, and I'm a part of it, a senior citizen, but I'm a part of it, and that is, and that is the birth certificate process. I, I love to call it Big Mama process. That's where you're going with this whole concept. It's called, I call it the Big Mama concept. Big Mama had a jurisdiction of her family and the land that she was on. 
She ran that process. Our women have the power from our culture, all our women of our culture, because we're in a matriarch culture. The system has systematically destroyed, undermined it, misrepresented our culture. And our men talk about our women like they're no good. You know, Granny wouldn't stand for it. He would knock your lips. Granny would knock your lips off your face if she could hear some of the trash that were going on. Your mama should have slapped the crap out of you. But due to the changing of the system, the onslaught of destroying black America, Moorish America, they have waged war on us. And one of the first processes that's worked, they have destroyed the matriarch concept. It's it's really unbelievable. And I think my son was telling me this morning, he, I saw him this morning before he went to work, and he was telling me, he said, Dad, we got to figure out how to get our people away from the ships of slavery and talk more about being here all the time here before the Europeans showed up. That's why we're no, we're, we have no part of their bullshit. We're only there through our mental capacity of by going to their schools and being taught the bullshit that they set up. We think we are part of the European psychological warfare, we think we are part of that. We have been brainwashed. We don't bit more know who we are than a man in the moon. And I'm talking about every one of them. The, the young boys on the street know more about who they are than all the education they put in all these niggas that graduated with these PhDs, masters, and bachelors, all that crap. All you're doing is making yourself a high-priced slave to work in the system, to keep them in power. That's all you're doing. Now, you may like it. I don't give a damn. But I'm telling you that you don't even want your parents to come to visit you anymore because you live out in the neighborhood and you don't want to start enough that your brother, Ray Ray, might come out there and pee in the front yard. Now you got a problem. Stuff like that. Y'all know what I'm talking about. So now it's went so far. It's went so far now that they have prepared, the Corporation of the United States has prepared to do what they know must be done, and that is they got to have to figure out a way to eliminate Help me somebody. To eliminate population so that they can control us. Eliminate proper population so they can control us, so that they can get more finance monies out of us. So they came up with a process. Henry Kissinger came up with a process. And that process was called, I am looking for the name of it. I'm going to call it now until I get to the good part. It's called Useless Eaters. They are, they have programs set up to eliminate the population of the earth. Hear me clear. They have zeroed in on where did I have? They zeroed in on let's, let's read this out. That they have zeroed in on rural areas. And when I hear rural areas, 
because they want to control the food process. So that means now that I'm watching my health, I begin to read the labels on most of the foods that I eat. And I'm finding that sodium, which is a no-no, especially when you start getting older, Sodium is in everything that you eat. And the reason for it, so they will tell you, is to longevity when it's on the shelves. It can it can keep the food fresh or keep it longer if it's if there's salt in it, whatever that means. But our taste buds have already been primed for salty food. We all have an urge. Salt. Okay? So if they're going to start, not start, if they're controlling the farmland, they're doing things that's going to make you die earlier. I'm 74, and I look at people in the 59, 60, 65, 70 age group, and I look at them and say, damn, I wonder what the hell have they been doing? I mean, they look old, old, they start acting old. I have no control over it, but I'm bringing it to your attention. Everything that you see, everything that shines is not gold. We need to start thinking for ourselves. And in order to do that, you have to get a rounded education as to who you really are and what you are really about, and who are your ancestors. Most of the wrongdoings that come to you is because you have turned your back on your mother's, father's, and your ancestors. So if you don't respect your mother and your father, I know damn well you don't respect your ancestors. Next, you're going to tell me it doesn't make a difference. Well, I beg to differ. We are in the age of Aquarius. The creator knows we're here. The creator also knows that he has to give us protection, but we have to be warranted for protection. So how do you get protection from your creator? Because nothing man has made is going to protect you. And surely no blonde-haired, blue-eyed, pale-skinned peckerwood hanging on the cross is going to spare, going to spare you. So you can throw this, get that out of your head right now. So the only thing that can spare you and protect you is the righteous path that your creator laid out for you. Stay on that path. They have so many weapons today. They're doing so much devilment, and that's a mild word. Atrocity. They're doing so many atrocities. They're saying that Obama's position on Obamacare, which you are in love with, is a process that Hitler used to eliminate the Jews. Same process. You, you can't see it because you don't know history. You can't believe it because you believe in uh, J.C., you know the ropes. You can't believe it because you don't think anyone can do something like that. But yet you go to church every day and they tell you that the earth is full of devil men. The devil's everywhere. It's a struggle to get out of devil men or to stay out of devil men. But that's me. So we're praising, for example, the queen and king of England, all that bullshit that went on last week with the baby this and the baby that. And notice they had them little blackies standing in the back worshiping the little white babies. I, I just can't get neck. I, I, let me say I'm glad I was born in my own land where I don't have to put up with that madness. You had never asked the question, how does England survive? You never bought anything from England. You don't know anything that England produces on the world level 
in order for them to maintain a country. You know, you look at France, they got at least, uh, what is it, wines and tourism and stuff like that. What does England have? They don't, you don't even talk about England. That's right. You don't even, how do they maintain themselves? Have you ever asked that question? How does the queen live on a billion dollar budget a year? What the hell is she doing with a billion dollars a year? And as long as you've been alive, Queen Elizabeth has been over there. So they tell you. Never questioned it. You never even thought about it. You never asked. Well, some of y'all would say what I was told one time. If Jesus wanted me to know, he would have told me. But I walked away. I used to get angry at that. Now I'd say that's a lost cause. I'll leave that alone. I'll leave that shepherd or that sheep for somebody else. I ain't fooling with that. Get get that out. No, I'm getting but they don't have to work because we work and we pay them. The international banksters come out of England. The largest financial institution in the world is in London. And inside of London, I think it's called London Town or City of London, inside of London. And you're not allowed to go in there. They don't talk Talk about it on the stock markets because they control the stock market. One knows it. All of the head leaders know it. You're getting ready to see one of the biggest downfalls in financial history behind Greece. But we don't care. You still bowling, cabarets, dancing in the street, shooting and killing each other. It don't matter to you. When they come after you, because we're going to get into it big time next hour, useless eaters. When they come after you and drag your ass off to the concentration camps to eliminate you, you're going to start looking back and saying, damn, we should have. We could have. Why didn't we? So I'm not going to waste my time telling you what you, what should be done because if you wanted something to be done, you would do it. I'm laying out a process. I'm, I'm a part of a process. And more people are getting interested in the process. And the goal of the process is to pay off the United States of America's debt to pay these international banksters. That's what it's all about. Redemption of your of your birth certificate. All of that. Everything we teach is to get them out of debt. That sounds corny coming from me. But it only sounds corny because you are ignorant to what that means. The only reason that you're in debt is because you have to pay for their foolishness on their worldly activity. King Harry and King Fred, all that bull crap they had on, damn that shit, that mess they had on TV. Oh, he had on a little dress that Harry wore last year when he got christened. Blah, 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 blah. It's madness. Why would they put that on the air? When 90% of, your, of the citizens of America are frustrated one way or the other. In debt up to their kazoozy. You got to start looking at this. No, no, let me say it better. You should start looking at this if you want to survive. You don't have long. When they put the black president in the White House, they were on the timetable. But you can't see it because you're so happy that a blackie's in the White House. He is no more your friend than Bush was. Reagan was. Clinton was. That's not his job to be your friend. It's bullshit. He's a master of bullshit. Yes. Big time. 
He's done nothing to raise your, your, your lifestyle. He's done nothing to protect you. We got more blackies in powerful positions in Washington than we've ever had, especially coming from the president. And then look at nobodies like uh, Al Sharpton. He's on an agenda. All of them blackies on TV are on agenda. They're not allowed to say this. There are cold words they're not allowed to say. I liked when I was watching the Bill Maher a couple of weeks ago when he was talking about the killing down in uh, Charleston, South Carolina. All the Republicans sung the same song that eliminated cold words, racism, white supremacy, hate crime. They never said none of that. He played all of their comments. One of them had to dance to say they don't know what to do. Now, they've already authenticated that the white said, the killer, Ruth, I'm going to kill all you niggas. I'm going to save one so they can tell it. I hate you. You're taking, you're raping my women and still in my land. Where did he get that from? 20 years old. Punk. High school dropout. Grade school dropout. How did he get all that language? You ain't never thought about that. Then turn around and listen to them jack leg ass preachers. And all they can say is we got to forgive. What the same meal is that about? Where were the youth? Where was the quote unquote Ferguson? Where were the quote unquote Baltimore youth? You telling me Charleston don't have any youth? And the crime that was committed in Baltimore trumps every crime, up to and including Trayvon Martin. And they sang and we shall overcome. And you don't question that. What you're looking at, you don't really see. There's a reason that Obama is in the White House. And there is an executive order out that it only has to be signed by the president. It's already been approved. That the the corporation head can stay in office for life. I know. You dummies are going to start talking about the Constitution. And I'm going to shut up. But if the Constitution, if they were following it, they would not be talking about our civil rights, so-called civil rights. The Constitution had nothing to say about civil rights. Martin Luther King came up with that madness and led us to believe that we were going to get some justice because they're going to enforce civil rights. We all fell for it. But I'm looking at Prince Philip and Sir David Atterbury are the top of the list of useless, are at the top of the list of useless eaters. They are demanding the depopulation of the planet Earth. They are the ones that want to shut down Earth. Why? They cannot control the people. The people are getting out of control. And the out of control only means that the people are demanding freedom. They're going to go after, they're using useless eaters as a motto. But what they're talking about, they're going after the leaders that want freedom. We at the top of the hour. And uh, I think we're going to take a break. As soon as I can find my engineer, we're back kicking it, talking about uh, saving ourselves. No one else is going to do it. 
We got to be more alert. We got to be more aware. So, <clears throat> and uh, we're going to talk about the useless eaters. Where did it come from? Who started this madness? Uh, Henry Kissinger with the Bush administration were the corporates of this mad, <laughs> the mad hatters started this madness. And they did it <clears throat> as a control factor, but yet, as I did my research on it, I also found that there are places and people who are instituting the useless each eat uh east eat useless eater project, but at the same time they are stealing organ parts, which brings on a, another issue. See everything that shine is not gold, and they talk about the population of the earth and that there's not enough food and this, that's a lie. All of that's a lie. Everything is set up by the creator to work for the creator. He wouldn't put more people down that could not provide for themselves. But due to man, of course, they start a lot of uh, economic finagling and dilly dallying around, and that before you know it, they're in the leadership positions and they're trying to modify nature itself. I got some quotes from uh, some of the leaders that talk about useless eaters. The illegal we do immediately, the unconstitutional takes. A little longer. They we're talking about the illegal they do immediately, but unconstitutional takes a little longer. <clears throat> They're talking about the process, I think, of people living or striving to live, which would be constitutional. So they're trying to figure out a way to eliminate people. Depopulation should be the highest priority of foreign affairs, foreign policy, towards the third world. Because the United States economy will require large and increasing amounts of minerals from abroad, especially from less developed countries. Listen to the arrogance of this. Listen to the white supremacy attitude that this bastard has. Kissinger again, power is the ultimate a phobocrats, a, a, I can't even pronounce it. The el elderly are the useless eaters. The elderly are the useless eaters. World population needs to be decreased by 50%. Henry Kissinger, you voted for Bush to put a person like this at his side as an advisor. Kissinger said in 2013, the challenge is, Kissinger told the Asian Society last week, how to build a world order for the first time in history on a global basis. We talk a lot about world community, but the fact is there, are, there has never been a world community before. And he then suggested China and the United States collaborate on such an effort to set up what he called world community. Joe Biden, who was, who is the vice president, he said, the affirmative task we have now is to actually create a new world order. Vice President Joe Biden. 1990, uh, Daddy Bush. Out of these troubled times, our fifth objective, a new world order, can emerge. Mikhail Gorbachev, we shall deteriorate. We saw deterioration 
where there should have been positive movement toward a new world order. We saw deterioration where there should have been positive movement toward a new world order. Here's Kissinger again. I think that his task will be to develop an overall strategy for America in this period, when really a new world order can be created. It's a great opportunity. Bush said that in Janu- on January 5th, 2009, he was talking about your black president, Obama. I think that his, quote, Obama's, unquote, task will be to develop an overall strategy for America in this period, in his his term of office, when really a new world order can be created. It's a great opportunity. David Rockefeller, we are on the verge of a global transformation. All we need is the right major crises and the nations will accept the new world order. Remember I talk about CCS, chaos, crises, and solution. David Rockefeller, one of the richest individuals in America. We are on the verge of a global transformation. All we need is the right major crises. 9-11, major crises. Death of the nine churchgoers, all engineered by the government. Theodore Roosevelt, society has no business to permit degenerated, degenerates. Oh, Lord. Society has no business to permit degenerates to reproduce their kind. Good God. I'd hate to hear his definition. Oh, I'd love to hear his definition of Degenerates. They're not allowed to produce their kind. So we can almost look at welfare mothers of being welfare, I mean, being uh, uh, useless eaters. And then we can inject. We should not permit degenerates to reproduce their kind. Wow. Mathis has been vindicated. Reality is finally catching up with Malthus. Who knows that is? The third world is overpopulated. It's an economic mess, and there is no way they could get out of it with the fast-growing population. These are just some quotes. These are just some quotes that you should know about. These are leaders. These are world leaders dropping this madness. A a total world population of 250 to 300 million people, a 95% decline from present levels would be ideal. Ted Turner said that. A total world population of 250 to 300 million people, a 95% decline from the present levels would be would be ideal. There is a single theme behind all our work. We must reduce population levels. Either government do it our way through nice, clean methods, or they will get the kinds of mess that we have in El Salvador or in Iran, or in Beirut. Population is a political problem. Once population is out of control, it requires authenticated government, even fascists, to reduce it. Our program in El Salvador didn't work. The infrastructure was not there to support it. There were just two GD goddamn many people. To really reduce population quickly, we have to pull the males into the fighting, and you have to kill significant numbers of fertile-aged females. Good God. 
The quickest way to reduce population is through phantom, like in Africa, or through disease, like in the Black Death. Thomas Ferguson, State Department Office of Population Affairs. Wow. For new enemies to unite us, we come up with the idea that pollution, the threat of global warming, water shortages, famine, and the like, and the like would be fit would fit the bull BS. But in designing them as as the enemy, we fall into the trap of mistakenly symptom symptoms for causes. All the these dangers are caused by human intervention, and it is only through change attitudes and behavior that they can be overcome. The real enemy then is humanity itself. Alexander King, Bertrand Schneider, founder of the, and secretary respectively, the, the Club of Rome and the First Global Revolution on their pages in 1991. Wow. Jacques Cousteau. In order to stabilize world population, we must eliminate 350,000 people per day. It is a horrible thing to say, but it is just as bad not to say it. Jacques Cousteau. And everybody thought was such a wonderful guy studying the ocean. I believe that human overpopulation is the fundamental problem on Earth today. And we humans have become a disease. A uh, human pox, David Foreman, Sierra Club, and co-founder of Earth First. We must speak more clearly about sexuality, contraception, about abortions, about uh, values that control population, because the economical, I mean the ecological crisis, in short, is a population crisis. Cut the population by 90%. And there aren't enough people left to do a good, great job, a good, great deal of economic, ecological damage. In other words, Mikhail Gorbachev was in favor. See, now we're talking about those heads of state that come up with wars just to get rid of population. And you vote these type of people in. Obama is a part of it. I don't give a damn what you say. You better wake up. He works for the corporation. He does not work for the black community. The black community is the one that's on, on trial. The black community is what owns the land. They're not here because they love us. They're here for our resources. Now that they've come up with the program of New Deal, which all of you need to study more of, especially since they took all the gold and silver out of circulation, Obama's in the White House because he was selected to be there by the powers to be, mainly England, Vatican, IMF, and the World Bank. Today, America would be outraged if UN troops entered Los Angeles to restore order. Tomorrow, they will be grateful. This is especially true if they were told that there was an outside threat from beyond, whether real or promulgated. promulgated. That threatened that threaten our very existence. It is then that all peoples of the world will plead to deliver them from this evil. CCS, again, create a huge catastrophe and then let everybody beg to come in. The one thing every man fears is the unknown. When, present, when presented, with this scenario, individual rights will be willingly relinquished. 
for the guarantee of their well-being get granted to them by the world government. Henry Kissinger ran that bullshit. And that's not called it bullshit, Ron. War and phantom would not do it. Instead, disease offered more efficient and faster ways to kill the billions that must soon die if the population crisis is to be solved. AIDS is not an efficient killer because it is too slow. My favorite candidate for eliminating 90% of the world's population is airborne Ebola. God. Because it is both highly lethal and it kills in days instead of years. We got airborne diseases with 90% mortality in, in humans, killing humans. Think about it. You know that the birds flew good. So you know the bird flu flu's good was good too. For everyone who survives, he will have to bury nine. He will have to bury nine. For everyone that survives, he will have to bury nine. Dr. Polanco, University of Texas, evolutionary eco ecologist and lizard expert, Lord, showed solutions for reducing the world's population to an audience on population control. No one will enter the new world order unless he or she will make a pledge to worship Lucifer. No one will enter the new age unless he will take a Lucifer initiation. This came from Dr. Spangler, David Spangler, Director of Planetary Initiative, United Nations. Oh, man. In South America, the government of Peru goes door to door pressing women to to be sterilized, and they are funded by American tax dollars to do this. Mark Early, Early, of the wrong kind of party, Christian Post. Women in the Netherlands who are deemed to by the state to be unfit mo mothers should be sentenced to take contraception for a prescribed period of time of two years. Wow. If I were reincarnated, I would wish to be returned to Earth as a killer virus and lower human population levels. Prince Philip, Queen Elizabeth's husband, Duke of Edinburgh, leader of the World Wildlife Fund. God. You can, you can get this information by... Putting in useless eaters. Childbearing shall be a punishment, punishable crime against society unless the parents hold a government license. All potential parents should be required to use contraception, contraceptive chemicals, the government issuing antidotes to citizens choosing for childbearing. That's at David Bauer. He's also of the Sierra Club. The principles that sustain compulsory vaccination is broad enough to cover cutting the salopinion tubes, just as Oliver Wendell Holmes. God. It's Ginsburg. Frankly, I, I had thought that at the time Roe was decided, Roe versus whatever that person wrote was. There was concern about population growth, and particularly growth in populations that we don't want to have too many of. Wow. She's on the Supreme Court. Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Planetary regime might be given responsibility for determining the optimum population for the world and for each region and for arbitrating various countries, shares with their regional limits, control of population size might remain the responsibility of each government, but the regime would have some power
to enforce and uh, the agreed limits. Obama's czar on science from a book he helped write. So my point in reading this and showing you this is the useless eater project is 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 real. We have to be special careful because there is a hit squad out of and I'm gonna read it for you. Yep, I got one more. Let me finish this up. I got one more to read. The drive of the Rockefellers and their allies is to create a one-world government combining super capitalism and communism under the same tent, all under their control. Do I mean conspiracy? Yes, I do. <clears throat> I am convinced there is such a plot, international in scope, generations old, in planning and incredibly evil in intent. Congressman McDonald. He was killed in a Korean airline 747 that was shot down by a Soviet by the Soviet Union. That's another indication that corruption is everywhere. When these people when these people disappear. Now, listen to this one. Obama Nation, euthanism, euthanation for the elders, useless eaters. Healthcare is the new Nazi state tool for getting rid of old, sick, and vulnerable. No civilized country can allow its healthcare system to become a death system. That is precisely what could be happening in the U.S., the U.K., and the E.U. Take the health keeper's oath and refuse to become part of that death instrument, which is an industry. Please take the health keeper's oath while there is still time. If our job is to is in the health industry and share it with others, whether you are or are not in that industry. Old is useless eaters to die first, but it will not stop there. So they're talking about Obamacare. On the outside, it looks like a good process, but on the inside, there are rules, regulations, and protocol set up. Because remember, once you sign up, you become a part of that jurisdiction. Let me say it again. When you sign up for health care, you are subject to all of the rules, regulations, and, and limitations of the system, of the jurisdiction of Obamacare. They did not publish all of the negatives that will be against you. They only gave you the positives. And notice how they're getting everything evil passed while the blackie is in office. Same-sex marriage. He had five victories last week, week before last. Every one of them, in depth, is a negatory. In depth. But on the outside, it looks good. So we can't complain. At all. I got some comments on the chat in the chat room if I can get my tools set up. And it looks like I can't get it there. So let me go over here. They're saying USA schools in planning IUDs in sixth grade girls without the permission of the parents. They don't think that met the six o'clock news. You're right. 
I've never, I've, I've heard talk of it, but when the talk I heard, they were trying to eliminate it. Health care is a death care. You got that right. Obama is is officially a dictator in every sense of the word. But you must admit he's a he's a smooth operator only because he's black and our black people are so slow to catch on. We worship the fact that we got a blackie in the White House. And none of that. He cannot be a citizen of the United States according to the 13th Amendment and surely because of the Dred Scott decision. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. Hello. I wonder if anybody's ever looked at it, looked at that. The 20 sections of the 13th Amendment. Look that up. 20 sections of the 13th Amendment. Then go to section 12. It'll tell you. No one of African descent can ever be a citizen of the United States. But we got one in the White House. Hello? Now, they made it clear that his mammy was white and his daddy was an uh, African. Neither one were Americans. The mammy, as you know, was Irish, if I'm not mistaken. And the daddy was Sudanese from Sudan, so they tell us. But they used the amendment that he was born in the United States, so that would make him a United States citizen, which is no big deal, especially when you look at the situation that we got a blackie in the White House who is a part of all of the useless eaters projects that literally is out to destroy the elders and the limping <laughs> and bad health. <laughs> and you don't know what those doctors are doing. If you don't get close to the doctor and have faith in the doctor, you got a problem. And especially when you go into a hospital, because those doctors, you have no idea who they are and where they come from. That's why I always have stressed, you must have a family doctor. Every working American should have a family doctor. Okay? They're still talking about Obama. They knew they could get anything passed with Obama. Uh, that's no, I agree. This is from I Am the Universe. I recall him before. D, uh, N-D-A-A. I have not heard of that. Every sense of the word, Obama is a dictator. Now, I, I, I got to say it. I wasn't, I, I wasn't on this program when the Bush, the Clintons, and the, the other Bush and Reagan, all of them was in, in office. But I wonder, I am the universe. I'm, I'm questioning you as to what comment would you have for them? That, that now, give me a, give me a. The slow kill of the sufficient it is sufficient enough because the medical industry can generate much more profit from slow than instant death. You're right, but they did not just read where the heads of state state say that they don't want slow death. They want it to be a quick death. And here comes a good one. Obama might serve a third term. I totally agree. The UN's Council on Planned Parenthood stated 15 years ago that two point Two billion suffices abortions. Wow. Sex rebel black, rebel black. 
I I can I can totally agree with most of what I am the universe. U.S. black women suffice their fetuses more than any other species known to man. Yeah, that's that's true. That's true. But the living conditions, I'm not making excuses, but the living conditions of black America is the worst in the history of man. And it's generated by the United States. So, and it didn't happen under Obama. This has been going on all the time. The elimination of black America. And I and I know you, I am the universe. You had papers. Your ancestors or your grandparents had papers to come to this land. Have you ever thought or asked the question why no black? I ain't talking about African. I'm talking about American black. We don't have papers. Never had papers. Why is that? Why is that, Mr. Universe? Can you deal with that? So, I mean, I can agree with a lot of what you're saying because it is happening. However, it didn't happen on Obama's watch. This madness has been going on for a long time. And they've been slowly working up to it. So once they put Obama in office under the rules, regulations, executive orders, and the agenda of world court, world uh, uh, domination, new world order, he doesn't have a choice but to, but to, but to deal with it. But let's not get hung up on that because you know a house Negro can switch to be a field Negro overnight. So I'm getting a lot of hits from from uh, I Am Universe. I recalled him once before, or them once before. I don't have a problem with it. I don't have to uh, argue or debate anything you said. Oprah's uh, Winfrey Net Network, New World Order. I don't have a problem with any of this. She's letting everyone that can see what she is all about. Well, okay, but either you have just flown in from another planet or you are a enemy of America, Mr. Universe, because all of this has been in place before Oprah, before Obama, and before you. But they didn't have the nerve to do it because they're Europeans. They are enemies of the state, all of the presidents. They were not born on this land. Their ancestors didn't come from here. How can they even talk about sovereignty when they're Irish, when they're German, when they're English, all the European uh, nation, nationalities? That's where they come from. And they were sent here on a permission or on a commission to steal the land. And now your criticism, which is no big deal, I have to agree with most of it, but your criticism is you got to act like you got a problem with Obama. I got a problem with all of them. And they had to have Obama or another blackie in there to get away with what they're doing. If you can't see that, you may have to go back to your country. Where are you from? Get out of here. It all started in 1555. I totally agree. But we were here in 1555. The Algonquin Confederation was founded in 1548. We didn't have no problem living here by ourselves, taking care of our business. You people, and you got to be a European, you people come over here with that bullshit. You come in as like a sheep, and you was a damn goat all the time. So 
So I don't have a problem with your comments. I think they're on t- on target, but they have to be put in perspective. They have to be put in perspective. And no, you didn't say Obama started it. And if I said you said that, I apologize. I didn't 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 say that. I'm telling you that this was put in place, as you say, in 1555. And they sent over here all their crooks and bombs. You may be a part of them crooks and bombs, rapists, as <laughs> as Trump says with his crazy ass. But I don't know. I'm not. I'm not casting stones. We got a major problem here. And eventually, if we're going to solve it, we're going to have to come together and come up with some strategy to overcome this madness. And I don't know what the strategy is other than protecting myself and my family. So I'm dealing with the birth certificate in order to do that. If that don't work, I got to go into plan B. So as they say, let's take it as it comes. Okay. The Hungry Games nightmare scenario present, presently being implanted or implicated in uh, it's called America 2050. You need to look up America 2050 and see what happens. America 2050. There it is. America 2050, I'm looking at it. It's supposed to be a project that, that's geared toward useless. I haven't read it, I just went to it. It's a plan setting up the elimination of the useless eaters. And let's not forget Let's not forget that the agenda has been in place for years. The last two comments I have from from, uh, I Am the Universe are very interesting. It ain't about when did it start, but when will it end? When is it going to end? I can't answer that because you can only wake up Americans one at a time. And after listening to the whites in uh, Charleston, South Carolina, I think you, Mr. I am America, you ought to try to get a show set up like this and try to reach those people. Called Hillbillies, you saw them. The ones that's been manipulated to believe that that flag is a part of them. Everybody seems to be comfortable and happy in the USA. And that's because of Obama. And I totally agree with you. And it's the craziest shit I ever seen in my life. So again, that should show you how close we are on solving this problem. It ain't black and white. I don't think it's black and white. It might be several million inhabitants by uh, 2025 in the U.S., possibly, two or three perhaps, possibly. But since we're not in control, since we're so happy, since we haven't really realized we're like a a frog. The frogs, they put in water, they dance and swim and think they're into something, turn that heat up, and before you know it, you eating frog meat or lobster meat, whatever it may be. Yep. So I will say to you, Mr. Uh, I Am America, that you should get your program and try to do something about it. Okay. I'm trying to I'm trying to raise the consciousness of my people, trying to make them understand and realize that we are in 
deep doo-doo. And if we don't start calling out the crooks as a start, we're going to be in worse shape than we really are. Okay? So it looks like we have a caller. Area code 314, last four, zero, four, four, zero. Do you have a yeah. comment? Yes, sir. Yeah, I have a I comment. Hear. This, this yes, side here, peace and love, peace and love, man. Uh, I want to uh, add a message to the brother named uh, I Am uh, Universe, and I'm going to say okay. this. We can always, you know, we, blame is to go all the way around. But we're going to have to look inside our homes first before we talk about the Obamas and everybody else. Because then our homes are the ones that's participating and believing in these people that perpetuate them. Obama don't make anybody vote for them and don't make nobody believe in them. So people making choices within our homes and our neighborhoods and our culture and our community that makes these people who they are. So it's our responsibility to get on it. It's easy to pick the stars out. And we know they fraud. We know they sell out. You see what I'm saying? Yep. But we have to look at ourselves. I agree. I totally agree, brother. And it's getting to be a bad portrayal as we look at everyday life. And just like he said, everybody seems to be so happy. And we are living worse today than we've ever lived. Let me say, I, have, I am living in a condition worse today than I've ever lived in as a, as a senior. Put it that way. That's what I'm trying to say. So if you don't know you're in hot water, how are you going to correct it? And we got some professionals. They they hire highly skilled psychiatrists, psychoanalysts in all fields to come up with these programs to keep everybody laughing and happy. And at the same time, they're crying when they gas and lights get turned off. So... I don't know, brother. Is that is that is that the end of your comment? Well, I, I just have to say this, man. We just don't have to look at it. There, there are going to be mercenary minds that's going to be out there, and we really just yeah. going to have to pass those who don't catch on because it's it's like you drowning in the in the in the ocean. You got to get yourself out of it and jump on the raft. You can't be t- waiting, you know, for somebody yeah. else. You're going to get put in yourself. Yes, I totally agree, and I appreciate your comment. All right, brother. Yep. Okay. So uh, we're getting close to the top. And I thought after listening to Dick Gregory, some of the heavyweights are coming out on some videos that are very uh, important. Uh, Dick Gregory's got one out on the Underground Railroad Network. If you can find it on video, just put in there uh, Dick Gregory on Underground Railroad broadcast. Uh, he's bringing up a lot of issues that we need to look at. But I can feel the frustration in his voice because all we can do is just bring it to your attention. If you don't want to look into it, study it, and at least give us some conscious thought, some righteous thought, which will give you an opportunity to fine-tune your paradigm. Your paradigm is what they're after, and that's what they focus on, to keep that paradigm in a pleasant state so that they can walk among us. As Bill Black says, walk among you. (laughs) Very funny, but it's true. But if you have the proper thought process, they're not coming into your zone. They're not going to come in your zone. That's a, a a protection that was given to you by the Creator. As long as you're on a righteous path, you can use your mindset to keep things in order. So, until tomorrow, we'll see what uh, we have coming out of uh, Detroit. Uh, we do a program tomorrow with Beverly D. And we're going to uh, check it out, see what she's about, add some comments.